All right, so guys, I'm doing a little inspection on the AP1 F20 C1 here. Um, I have this Harbor Freight uh, Ames uh, boroscope inspection camera. Um, this was like 70 bucks, 75 bucks after a coupon, so it's a hell of a deal. It's actually very impressive for the quality of it, uh, for the price. Um, you can adjust the intensity of the LEDs and everything, and then uh, you know you can see it has has pretty live feedback on what you're doing here, but. As you guys know, you know, I went from 9200 in third gear into second on track, a super fast shift to lock up the rear tire, shot the engine way above the red line. So right now I'm checking for any kind of piston to valve contact. Um, I'm not able to bend the camera in like a 180 when I get it in the cylinder to see the bottom of the valve. But what I am doing is trying to look at the top of the piston uh, with this inspection camera to see if there's any marks on the top of the piston. Uh, from potentially a valve just touching it or anything. Whatever piston you're trying to look at, you're going to want to have towards the bottom of the stroke. So right now, cylinder one's on top dead center. You can see the top of the piston. Now, uh, as you can see, it's got the PCX um, number on it. They're very clean on the top. Um, you're going to want to try to increase the intensity of your light as much as you can. Um, I know I don't have the best kind of view of this on the camera here the lighting's a little off but I can rotate this around and see the seats of the high compression pistons you know these are stock Honda pistons of where the valve would have made contact right in that pocket right there so I'm gonna swirl it around check the other side this isn't super HD you know you're not gonna get perfect clarity but for a Harbor Freight product I think this does give a really nice picture and there's no marks on those two just go around and check and kind of spin this whole device around because this cable is pretty stiff I have a slight bend into it right now, so it'll look at the side of the piston and not directly on top of it. But um, as you can see, look over here, and then rotate it. You can kind of see the other one over here. Uh, that's the idea. I'm not going to show you every single one. I'm going to look for any kind of signs of a mark from the valve. But um, the engine still ran pretty good after I over revved it, so I highly doubt any valves contacted the piston. So this is just a preventative check. And then next I'm going to be taking the caps off and the cams out and checking all the retainers. Just for peace of mind, I do have AP2 intakes in this and AP1 exhausts. So checking out the uh, pistons in the S2000. Checking for any kind of marks from valves. Smack them and they all look pretty good. Uh, there's no marks anywhere on the top of the piston. So I'm gonna go ahead and inspect all the retainers again. So I have the cylinder cover off right now. As you can see, I have hose from the leak down tester and the cylinder one right now. Cylinder one's on top dead center. Make sure you go through and loosen all your valves here so that you have a lot of slop between them. That takes pressure off of all the cam uh, caps here. So when you loosen these, the cams won't be like trying to fly off the valve spring and, and rock up. Um, so make sure you crack all 16 of those nuts loose and then back out the actual screw so that there is some flop between um, the valve, just like that. So once you do that, you can then move on to taking the five cam caps off. They are actually molded with the numbers on them, so you don't gotta mark them yourselves as one, two, three, four, and five. Alright, so once you get your cams out, you can flip all your intake rockers back. Your exhausts won't stay, so you gotta leave them down. Um, and then you're gonna have fresh access to all the keepers. These are all AP2 keepers. I'm gonna double check them just because I need a peace of mind on this. Um, they say online they've never really seen AP2 re retainers crack, but I think I had kind of a really bad over rev situation, so I wanna check it out. Alright, so last time I did this job, I used one of these valve compression tools right there. They're on Amazon for like 15 bucks. Uh, it was a pain in the ass using that. So I'm trying something different. I'm borrowing this from a friend, but I might buy one myself if it works out well. This is a uh, overhead valve spring compressing tool, kind of gantry system. It's on eBay 
for like 30 bucks shipped with the case. Not bad at all. There's other brands that make them that are more expensive, but this is like the cheapest of the cheap that you can get. And it's a totally different style of compressing the valve spring. So they have these little brackets that you mount on uh, the cam cap locations that we just took off. But um, what I found out, and I ran into a little problem, was they include like a couple bolts with it, but those bolts aren't nearly long enough to, um, to go down in these holes right here because I'm not taking those out of the car. I think the kit is designed to work on a head with those out of the car, so you'll never get any threads engaged in the threads in the block to hold this bracket down. So what I'm going to do is use the OEM bolts, and I just got back from Lowe's, uh, but the OEM bolts are way too long then because you're replacing the thickness of the, uh, the cam cap with a 180 thou thick plate. So your screw is going to sit down a lot further and you're going to bottom it out quicker. Why? Because it's not a fully threaded bolt. It's only got about an inch of threads on it. So you got to kind of keep the meat in between the same, if you will. So I bought a, uh, a spacer that's an inch long and a, uh, a screw washer um, to just sew it. It's an oversized spacer. I couldn't find one at Lowe's that was the right diameter. So it's a little sloppy, but the washer will, will compensate for that on the top end. So this thickness here is roughly the same as the cam cap, maybe a tiny bit more. It's maybe 200 thousandths more, so not as many threads will bite, but it'll be very close and um, hold these brackets down. So as you can see, here's the bracket. I got my bolt. I'm going to put this on top here, drop the bolt in, start threading it in, and it looks like I'm going to get well over, I mean, probably like three-eighths of an inch of uh, thread engagement before this is going to get tight. Um, and you don't need to rare these down. Remember, the, these are only torqued to 16 foot-pounds uh, when you put the cam caps on, so I would just do snug by feel with your hand. Um, so you're going to install one of these on the front and one on the back of the engine. Um, so you can see the spacers in there, and this is kind of the gantry brace. Um, and you put one on each side of the engine, and you put a rod through, and then you can have this kind of cantilever lever to work off of that rod with to compress the retainer down. One on the back. I'm angling them away from the engine just so I have as, as much room as possible here. Drop that down. As you can see, that's how much thread you pretty much are biting into. And then I'll put the other one in. Snug them up a little bit. There you go. Now your gantry system is in. So now comes the iron rod that pretty much just slides through the entire thing like that. And then now we grab the last and final pieces. We're all ready to go here. Cylinder one's on top dead center. Make sure your car's in gear with the e-brake on if it's all four wheels or on jack stands here. Um, compression or the leak down tester's hooked up. I'm going to use this regulator to set it at like 30 psi just to make sure the valve does not drop when we get going here. Always bring it up from zero. You don't want to shock load it to try to spin the crankshaft by any means here. Um, okay, so I've got the gantry kind of where I want it. And I'm going to go ahead and try to get over to this first valve here. And we'll see how I make out. So as I suspected, you need to hit it to get the keepers out with this tool. Um, you won't be able to do it with this because the keepers are stuck in there. So this is the infamous Leslie 36200 uh, tool, magnetic removal tool. Um, I'm going to try to use this. I definitely don't like the idea of hitting anything in the valve train, but um, they say this is the wonder worker when it comes to removing these keepers. I'm curious of how hard you have to hit this thing. You have to hit it pretty dang hard to make these things pop out. So every time I'm hitting it, I'm still, I'm still popping the, uh, the pressure here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this up to 50 psi and see if I have any better luck getting this out here. 
So I got one of them popped out. I can lower the pressure down to like 30 psi now. All right, so the tool worked pretty good. You want to hit them loose first with the Leslie uh, magnetic tool. Once you get one popped out, and make sure you don't lose it anywhere. Once you get it popped out, then you can use the gantry system here to push it down and not have the valve follow it, and then get the second keeper out with a little magnetic pickup tool. It's I just picked this up at Lowe's for six bucks. It's very tiny and has a little magnet at the end. It works perfect. Um, but here we go. I got the first AP2 retainer popped loose. And let's take a look. And here comes the spring with it. And uh, as I expected here, there's, there's no signs of cracking at all on this intake retainer. It absolutely looks brand new still. So going back in the car, I'm going to repeat this 16 times for um, remaining valve retainers. And just to give myself a peace of mind and make sure that the uh, AP2s are actually indestructible. And check all my exhaust AP1s. Um, they, I've never checked them in this car, but I feel like it's time because it's over 12,000 RPM according to the math. So I'm going to check them all and I'll report back if I find any that have any signs of cracking. Alright guys, so the retainers are all back in. I just torqued down the cam caps. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a valve adjustment now. I'm not going to make a DIY on how to do the valve adjustment. If you want to look it up, there's plenty of really good detailed videos on YouTube of how to do the valve adjustment on s 2000 I highly suggest checking out uh, the DIY guy's channel, uh, Valve Adjustment. I'll leave the link for that in the description. He does really good videos, so can't make a better video than that, so I'm not going to bother. The results from the retainer inspection was the exhaust sides, all the AP1s were were good. Um, none of them had any any major cracks or any kind of hairline cracks, but they all have a very, very fine, and I'll show you here. So I believe it might be like a casting mark on all of them, but they all have a very, very fine um, hairline kind of blemish in the retainer. And I'll try to see if I can get it on camera here. There's like a hairline mark radially around the retainer here. So the mark on the retainer there, I'm not sure if it's a casting mark or a hairline crack, but pretty much every um, every AP1 retainer that I have, I mean, these are the eight that came out of the intake side three years ago when I put the AP2s in the intake side, and um, they all have the same exact mark on them. So I ended up taking like the three worst looking ones out of the exhaust and replacing them with the three best looking ones from my intake side. So I only changed out three, but like I said, none of them were cracked really, so they withstood the, the massive over-rev. And of course, the AP2 retainers on the intake side were all fine, as expected. None of them had any problems. So I'm um, getting ready to bolt this thing back together. Um, it should run, should run great.